week's episode of the Come Over Report podcast. Uh, we had to record a podcast this week to celebrate and look back on the fantastic Munster final win. Tipperary crowned Munster senior champions for 2023 last Saturday and um, beating Clare 126 to one goal and nine. Fantastic victory. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined now by Thomas Conway of the Nina Garden. Just look back on the game. Thomas, uh, I suppose it's a uh, maybe 48 hours since the win um looking back in the game your thoughts on that victory and what pleased you most about it yeah i suppose it, it wasn't just the victory i suppose the first thing to say is this was huge for tipperary the actually achieving silverware finally landing a title is cruise of crucial importance i think psychologically to the team i think they've been striving hard for this for several years now i think you know and it, it predated this current management team back to the days of bill mulaney and that um ha, they'd worked really hard and probably didn't get the reward in, in terms of silverware but they finally managed to land that provincial title on saturday and they did so in style it was a it was a masterful performance in Tipperary. i really really thought you know things just hit gear their forwards were played seamlessly uh karen kennedy was imperious at the back it was a really all round a refined pop side. I think this tip side has has really matured over the course, maybe not just um not just for the past few years, but of the course of the last few months, the course of this season. Uh, the side has evolved and matured. So it was a huge victory, and you know, well done to the girls. I mean, I was delighted as a I know I'm a reporter, but I'm also a tip supporter. So it was really satisfying to see them win that Munster title on Saturday. Yeah, Thomas, I know you've been following the team for years, reporting on the game. So, and like, and I've had you on the podcast before. And we've supposed to talk about games that we've nearly won and could have won and should have won. So, it is great to finally be talking about a victory and for that team, like you said, a huge psychological boost to, I suppose, get the monkey off the back and pick up some silverware after 13 years. Um, just a note on Claire as well. I suppose it's a massive turnaround in the 12 months. Um, you know, to go this time last year, lose to Claire to beat them by 17 points. Um, for me, a big difference, I suppose, the change of personnel. So I'm just looking through the team that started on Saturday, Kareem Blair, Teresa Ryan, uh, Karen Kendi, Clodagh Quirk, Emer Heffernan, all weren't available for, for selection last year. You know, we had Clodagh and Karen were out injured. Um, Teresa and Emer and Kareem then were unavailable to the panel of traveling and so forth. So like, I suppose that's a big difference in itself, but, were you surprised with Clare, maybe the their perform overall performance? Do you feel they went back a bit or that tip have just improved so much? Well, it is a significant reversal and it is important to say that. I was surprised to a certain extent with Clare. Uh, I thought they'd offer a more potent challenge. But really, I think it's a story of improvement on the part of tip. I think that is the more significant factor here. I think the players that you've mentioned coming back into the fold the Clola Quirks, the Karen Kennedys have really transformed this tip team and I think those two in particular that duo Emer Heffernan was sublime on Saturday as well it must be said struck a beautiful goal in the in the 26th minute um, but I think tip are playing with a a fluency a fluidity to them they seem they seem to have they know their game plan they know their roles in their respective positions uh, they play off one another Karen Kennedy as I say imperious at the back really really influential i think you would struggle to find a more influential player than karen in inter-county camogie at present i really think she she shapes this tip team everything revolves around her uh she orchestrates the attack she initiates she initiates those attacking moves i think she's a huge player for tip and will be going into the all ireland series i think it's it is surprising though it is surprising that claire didn't um didn't put up more of a fight it probably wasn't their day, and you can blame that. But Tip have recorded two kind of significant victories over them now, and I think Tip have advanced to another level. Uh, the the question is, and this it really is the big question: Can they advance it to a level whereby they're threatening the Corks, the Galways, the Kilkennys? Now I know they did so; they beat fantastic win over Galway during the league, uh, came within touching distance of Kilkenny. But those teams at championship level are going to be a different kettle of fish. So this is the real test for Tipperary now. Can they move on? 
can they build on this success? Can they use the momentum uh, to power themselves going forward? I think they can. I believe they have it in them, but it remains to be seen. We'll, we'll know over the next few weeks and the next few months. Yeah, just going back to your point about Karen Kendi and how instrumental she was on Saturday and to this team as a whole. Were you surprised that Leclerc left her free in the first half? It seemed to be a mistake on their part, you know, for me looking on, like she just, it's the last player you want to be free, really. Oh, yeah, I couldn't fathom that decision. I think you manage, like tactically, Claire really have to look at themselves going into that game because, I mean, even we look at the personnel there and Claire, the Claire team hasn't changed all that much. I think the system they're playing doesn't suit them at the moment. I think the fact leaving Karen Kennedy free was a fatal error, a fatal mistake, and they paid a heavy, heavy price for it. Um, but I think in general, and I know this is we're focused on Tipperary here, but I think Claire would really have to assess themselves uh, and take a look at themselves, dust themselves down after that defeat, because there are a number of structural flaws that you could point to in their setup. Leaving Karen Kennedy free was obviously the chief mistake among them, but there are other flaws as well. I think you know, uh, I think they could have played looser in the forward line. I, I think they were a bit wedded to positions. There are there are various things you know you could pick holes in them, um, but at the same time, Tip capitalised on those errors, and it is good to see Tip, uh, with an ability to punish, punish the mistakes that Claire made because you have to have that streak of ruthlessness. That streak of ruthlessness is vital, and it will be vital coming into the All Ireland series. Um, but Tip seem to have it, and if they can continue to execute like they did last Saturday, well, the sky is the limit then. Yeah, and just uh, on the point about Claire, I suppose we saw earlier on in the game, I think it was one of the first balls into Anya Lachlan. She caught it and, you know, she looked dangerous and she got a wonderful goal against Limerick in the semi final. Um, you know, but she probably she didn't get enough ball into her. We could see when Claire took on the tip fence, they did win some frees, they did have some good return. And then you had Lorna McNamara, excellent free taker, who punished tip every time. Um, at the start of the second half, I suppose Claire did get ball into Anya Lachlan and she did find the back of the net um, and Tip looked a bit on edge there I suppose Claire hit a purple patch maybe for about 10 minutes or so were you worried at any stage at that, at that time after the clear goal and I think Tip picked up three yellow cards in a row as well a bit of frustration and late tackling and things like that yeah I, to be honest I never really thought the result was in doubt I think even during that clear purple patch at the beginning of the second half I think Tip were uh, they were measured in their response and they, they showed a really mature response. They hit back with several points, uh, quick salvo scores. I never really thought the result, they were in too much jeopardy. Now, it has to be said, I mean, Claire, offer, Claire do offer a threat going forward. The likes of Lorna McNamara, as you say there, talismanic free taker, uh, really accurate from freeze, really impressive. But I mean, tip up that at the far end and Ema McGrath and to on another level, quite Devan. And I think it's Tip's, Tip's sharp shooting ability was what really impressed me last Saturday. I think their ability to pick off scores at pivotal times in the game was really huge. Um, and it really served them well. We have to look at the likes of Quiva Mar, uh, the likes of Emer Heffern in there. They have a an artillery or kind of a, a, a set of forwards there that I think are really, really treacherous when going forward, when given the right supply. And when you have the likes of Karen Kennedy and Claude Quirk and co delivering ball up to that forward line, they will inflict serious damage. Uh, so did I think the result was in doubt? No, I, I thought Tip were, were more or less comfortable all the way through. But I think it was it was the sign of a more mature side, the fact that they could respond to that 1-1 that Clare scored at the beginning of the second half. And I suppose one thing after the Waterford game that Dennis probably wasn't happy with was that they didn't really score enough points, didn't really get enough uh, points from play. Um, they really turned that around on Saturday. I think we had 10 different scores. We had Kareem Blair, a half-back line, got a point. Casey Hennessy, midfield, got 10 points. All six forwards scored from play. Then Queen Mac or Irina Friday came off the bench and scored and Queen McCarthy came off the bench and scored. So 10 different scores from play. That definitely was a highlight for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 10 different scores from play was obviously huge. And I think what you have to point to there is Tip's strength in depth. 
the likes of Irina Friday, the likes of Quiba McCarthy, the players that they can bring on there uh, are really experienced. They're, they're both, you know, they're not just impact substitutions. They add a, a stability to the team. I think Irina and Quiva in particular uh, came in and had a huge influence. Uh, uh, you know, were really punchy, really looking to get forward, looking to get on goal. Uh, there was an exuberance about them. And there's an exuberance about the tip team in general. I think their movement up front, their movement up front is second to none. Uh, their, their understanding, these forwards have an intimate understanding of one another. Uh, and I think they can really play with a creativity and a kind of a, a you know, a, a flair when they get going. So I thought it was a really impressive all round display from Tip. I don't think they'll be given that luxury, that freedom when they come up against sides in, in the All-Ireland series. I think it will probably be a different ball game. They'll be marked much more tightly. Uh, it'll be much more strenuous and challenging in order to create scoring opportunities. But I have every confidence that they'll rise to that challenge. And given on the evidence so far this season, this is a tip team that is destined for big things. Now, I don't want to overshoot the mark here. Um, but, I mean, there is... They've been knocking on the door for a few years. They've been trying to break that triad of dominance, that Cork to Kenny Galway. You know, some team is going to have to do it somewhere uh, or at some time. And, you know, my question, if not now, then when? And if not Tip, then who? Um, I think Tip actually have it, have the resources, have the players to do it this year. I think it would be a major breakthrough to beat, beat one of those top sides in championship action and just break through that glass ceiling. Uh, and I think this tip team is the team to do it. Yeah, and, and when you look down through the subs, um, you see how strong the bench is. I suppose that's a great testament of a team. Uh, like we spoke about Cueve McCarthy coming on, Arena Friday coming on, Mary Ryan, Raid, Everston, Leaf, Tracy, all made an impact off the bench and all fighting for places. And that's not even to mention the players that didn't come on. Claire Hogan would have featured a lot last year in the championship. Claude McIntyre would have featured in a lot of games also in the championship coming back from injury. Here the Maher, a regular starter last year, um, that suffered a recent concussion that ruled her out. So, like, and then you have the younger players like, you know, the Fahey Twins and Grace Maloney and Lorna Ryan. So, huge, huge talent on that bench. They're all going to be fighting for places. So, I think the next four weeks, look, we'll, we'll talk again about the all Iron series. We'll preview that on another podcast. But I think the next four weeks will be about competition for places and uh, panel matches and training and you know making sure that nobody rests on the laurels and like I said maybe pushing forward looking for more silverware the Monster Championship fantastic to win it brilliant to have a double header with the Monster GA it's been a fantastic competition I've gotten great coverage and great interest and look the girls fully deserving winners and you know fully deserving to it, enjoy that and celebrate it but I'd imagine Dennis Kelly this week will get them back to training back to basics and have four weeks for to face Dublin at home, and it's all going to be about competition for places and putting out your strongest fifteen come uh come the tenth of June. Yeah, and look, I spoke to Dennis on Sunday, and that was exactly the indication that he gave. I mean, he was obviously he was ecstatic, he was delighted with the victory as as he should be, and as the tip players, and they should celebrate this victory. I mean, the Munster Championship, it's. It might be a second grade competition. It's obviously going to play a second fiddle to the All Ireland, but I mean, it is still a piece of silverware, and you have to be able to celebrate these wins and enjoy these moments. And I think the tip players should do that. But I think you're right. Over the next few weeks, there will be serious competition for places in that panel. I think you have a number of players knocking on the door there, looking to looking to break into that starting fifteen. Um, who are well capable of doing so, uh, and I think it's a really sign. It's a it's a great sign of healthy competition within the squad. You have kind of a diversity of players there, a variety of different players. The likes of, I mean, you know, Irina Friday is a very different player from the likes of Grace Maloney. Um, so what I, you know, what I'm trying to say is, you have lots of variety there. You have a multitude of different players with different skills and different assets whom you can draw upon. Um, and that could be really valuable to tip going forward because, as we know, it's not a 15-player game anymore. It's a it's a 20-player game um, when you go out each time. And tip are going to need to be able to draw on that variety when they play the top championship sides because 
it's not always going to go Tip's way. They're not always going to play as smoothly as they did last Saturday in Thurles. Uh, and it really was a refined performance last Saturday in Thurles. But things went right for Tip. It's on the bad day. It's can they can they achieve and can they generate results when playing at 70%? You know, that is that is the question, I think, from a temporary perspective. I think they need to be able to generate generate success and keep keep on building steadily and, and even when they're not flying at 100%. But I thought Saturday's performance was really, it was a tour de force, really. It was really, really impressive from an overall perspective. And, you know, congratulations to the players. They, they deserve to celebrate it. Yeah, very, very true words there, Thomas. Um, like I said, a fantastic victory deserved to be celebrated and to be marked. And um, what also hopefully it's only the start of of bigger things to come this summer. And look, no doubt, Clare will regroup after this. There's a lot more in Clare too. And I still think that they could have a very good summer too. I, I, I can see them um, reaching the quarterfinal stages anyway at, at a minimum. So look, Thomas, we're going to leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Stephen, uh, to look back on a Munster final. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. So after Saturday's victory, uh, I got reaction from manager Dennis Kelly, players caught the fan and Mary Ryan. And sisters, uh, and wing back and wing forward, Ethan McGrath and Eamon McGrath. He's part of this as well, you know, we can't forget about that. It's not just me coming in and, and shaking things up a little bit. You know, it, it's been the people before me as well have, have played their part. Quite the journey, Dennis, hasn't it been? Because like, I've been following the Camogie for a lot of years and I know exactly what it's like. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's there's been tough days, but you've got here. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need to be persistent about it and, and dogged and, and, you know, take the feats on the chin and, and learn from it and come back. You know, those girls have done that and there's some youth coming through now as well. They'll give us an, an extra push on. But, you know, this count for nothing later on in the year if we don't. You know, it's nice to have the cup at the table now. We need to drive it on. We, we have, uh, you know, other things in our side further on the line. Yeah, the All-Ireland is next up for you now. But um, going into that as Munster champions is surely a big uh, bonus. It'll be a big help. But, you know, we can't look past Dublin in four weeks' time. Because, you know, once, you know, it, it's... Uh, as the saying goes, walk easy when the jug is full, and the jug is full at the moment, but it might be too full if, if uh, Dublin turns us over. So, you know, we have to get, keep our minds on the game and, you know, get back to training during the week. Is that an old saying from the Tommy Barra dressing room of old? Uh, I'm not sure where it came from, but it's a good one at the same time. Great stuff. Well done, Dennis. <laughs> Thanks very much, Liam. Yeah, look, the, the stadium to sure everyone wants to come the field, but as we've said, the competition there at the minute and the young ones bringing life into the squad, it's, it's great to get on the field again a few minutes and... Um, Embrace today and embrace the, the win, absolutely. Okay, just on the league, uh, Cod, you must have been disappointed with the way it ended, I suppose, against Kilkenny. But at the same time, you know, they say you learn a lot of defeat. He obviously did. Yeah, that's it. Look, we took it on the chin. It was early stages of, of the season for us. We couldn't dwell on it too long, you know, because we had most of the championship. Um, so we just said we take the learnings from it and try work on them. And we've worked incredibly hard during Munster Championship, the leader for Munster Championship, and, and during preparation for Waterford and for Clare today um, to right them wrongs, you know. And, and I think you, you could see that out there today that, that we have, you know, which is really, really satisfying. Um, but definitely, look, the, the league was, I suppose, disappointing for us because we felt like that we were going well. But again, like I said, that is sport, and you have to take on the chain, especially when it's so early in the year. It could have unnerved us going forward, and it didn't. And I think that's, that shows kind of resilience and character that's in this group as well, you know. Yeah, and the way you scored there today, I made mean, it was 121 out of the 126 game we played, wow. which in Camogie is, yeah. is incredible. And yeah. like they weren't just tap over points, they were coming from every yeah. angle in the field. Is this something you're trying in training? Yeah, well, like we're focused on it, and I think girls are taking the onus on themselves as well to work on things like that outside of training, which is very important. Um, but like the conditions out there today were perfect. Do you know the sun shining? There wasn't a puff of air out there either, so um, it was a day for for shooting. So look, we had a good day today. They went over, and and we just have the confidence to stay shooting because the more you know, the higher percentage sure. that you take, the more likely that they go over. So look, today was a good day, and in in the shooting stats, and uh, it was definitely something that we targeted today coming in. I think against Waterford, it wasn't as the percentages weren't as high. So again, it's satisfying to think that we turned that around. As everyone knows, it's a long time since we brought silver back to to very senior. So it's well overdue, and uh, this this squad are, are just for big things like the squad are putting in mighty effort, and it's just great to get over the line today. You've been working so hard for this over the years. To get there now is it's a super moment to get that silver. Line. Yeah, absolutely. Like you know, God, it's the same there. Like just the the young ones coming up along are, are adding such fire to, to this uh, group, and you know, as I said. 
there, there was big things to come. Like the, the, the squad are putting in so much effort, um, and, and just getting to where today is absolutely fantastic. And we look forward to all our championship. Great stuff. Cart, Devan, your thoughts? Yeah, look, I suppose I just echo what Molly's after saying there. Um, that dressing room is absolutely alive inside, and it's, uh, we're enjoying every minute of it, you know. Um, there's an awful lot of work goes into days like today, a lot of unseen work, I suppose, and, and other years. It's been 13 years since we had brought silverware back, and we haven't, um, you know, all the hard efforts this has been building for the last couple of years. And the, like Mal just said, the, the young girls coming in are bringing a fearlessness with them and an energy and driving us all on, you know, they're keeping us on our toes, and that's the way it should be. And, um, and look, the management team, that group of girls, there's 30 odd in there, they deserve it so much. And look, hopefully it's a sign of more, more things to come for the year. We're really looking forward to our championship now in four weeks. A big journey, even in 12 months, to lose from Clare to come back to beat them this year. Yeah, I suppose look, that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? You know, that's why we all play it. There's every day you go out, anybody can beat anybody, you know, and, and we were aware of that. We knew coming in here today that Clare were going to pose a bit massive challenge, and they did, you know. Um, we just worked really, really hard out there from number one right through to number 20, all the subs that came on, and, um, and look, uh, we, we really enjoyed it. Yeah, and then, like um, the other younger players have really stepped up this year as well, haven't they? And like Karen Kennedy is such an immense player there in centre back. Yeah, look, well, um, she, I think she's up here to match there today, and it's it's so well deserved. Um, she's the backbone to the team there. She drives forward with ball and, and up the delivery ball. She's been into form. It's absolutely unbelievable today. You know, she made our job inside incredibly easy um, with, with her delivery of ball, and, and she's just immense. She's such a leader on and off the field, and I'm thrilled for her to to be lifting the cup with Claude and, and and to get there to match there today as well. Great stuff, Mary Ryan. You drive it on, I guess now. Absolutely, yeah. Look, we will enjoy this because it doesn't come around often, like so. We'll enjoy enjoy the win, and we'll knock it down later in the week. Then look forward to the All Ireland Championship in a few weeks' time. Yeah, it's just around the corner. Yeah, four weeks' time now. We've done at home, so um, you know, days like this give you a bit of confidence. You know, uh, the bit of success will give us a bit of confidence now going into All Ireland Championship. Oh, my sisters, Aoife and Emer McGrath. Aoife, you must be absolutely delighted with that win. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Um, you know, we've a lot of hard work put put in over the last few years. Like, you know, and have been keep competing with the top teams, but probably have have been short of silverware. So, like, to get over the line and win a monster final today, it's fantastic. And Emer, you set out the stall early, I suppose, got a good few points ahead of Clare, and then that Emer Heffman goal really gave you a nice cushion at half time. Ah, uh, yeah, sure, Emer. You know, cool as can be it again. Uh, rattled rattled the back of the net, and um, but yeah, a good chance. Strong start like last week and I think that probably gave us a platform then to push on for the rest of the match. And were you worried at the start of the second half, I suppose Clare got an early goal and had a bit of a purple patch? Um, yeah, I suppose we should have to be expected in any match but um, I think we responded really well to the goal and you know, uh, once we did that then we kind of never looked back and you know, uh, the result took care, of itself, took care of itself then. And Aoife, was winning a Munster title a target at the start of the year? Yeah, absolutely. Like you know, any competition you want to win, any competition you're playing, like you want to win it. Like you're not in it just just for the sake of it. Like you know, so any day you win a cup, like it's special and it's to be embraced and enjoyed. Like, and it's so long, I suppose, since we won any silverware. And you know, the Munster Championship is a really important competition now, especially since we partnered with the Munster G and having double headers. Great to be playing here today in Semper Stadium and a big crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, do you know, we, we put in the hard work, so like to get to play in the big fields like like Central Stadium, Parky Creed, like, you know, they make it extra special, like, and then to, to get to win a Munster final here in Central Stadium in, in, in Tipperary, like, you know, it, it's fantastic stuff of dreams. And I know, Emer, you'll enjoy this one, you'll celebrate it tonight, but it'll be back to the drawing board, back to folks, and then on the All Ireland Championship. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah. So um, I think we've a couple of weeks now off again before um, we take on Dublin in the first round. So yeah, definitely enjoy it now for a couple of days, but it'll be back to work then later in the week. And Aoife, I suppose you have to be impressed with the forward play today. I think all six forwards got on the scoreboard, subs come on all scoring as well. The movement and the pass and the sport play is definitely something you can see the tip really worked on. Yeah, that's it. Like, you know, this is a panel game, like be it the, the starting 15 or the ones coming on. Like, we don't care who gets the scores as long as as long as they're put over the bar, like, you know, or in the back of the net. Like, you know, and we had a great spread of scores again today, like we did in Cork the last day. Like, you know, you need everyone chipping in. And in fairness, like, I think the ball was given to the people in the best position now, and they did the job today. Great stuff, guys. Thanks very much. So we hope you've enjoyed this week's Camogie Report podcast. A look back on the 2023 Senior Monster Final where Tipperary were emphatic winners over Clare, winning on a final scoreline of 126 and 19 to 19. And once again, we congratulate all the players and on all the management for a fantastic performance for a fantastic Munster Championship. And we look forward to the All Ireland series now, which kicks off in June. And 
fingers crossed it will be a successful one. Um, we'll chat to you again soon.